From the Cronkite Studios in downtown Phoenix, this is Cronkite News. Program known as DACA that was effectuated under the Obama administration is being rescinded. The Trump administration ends DACA, what this means for Arizona and the nearly 800,000 dreamers in the United States. Fear, anger, and heartbreak. The DACA decision leads to protests in the Valley and nationwide. Plus, hundreds of Valley high schoolers walk out of class to defend DACA. Now schools and universities are trying to plan for an uncertain future. Cronkite News starts now. Good evening and welcome to Cronkite News on Arizona PBS. I'm Maya Petros. And I'm Ryan Curry. Thank you for joining us. It is now time for Congress to act. This was the message from President Donald Trump after the announcement of his decision to rescind the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals program, referred to as DACA. Cronkite News reporter Trevor Fay starts our team coverage tonight. He was at the Justice Department to learn why the administration is winding down the program. In a scripted 10-minute statement in which he took no questions, Attorney General Jeff Sessions announced that they would be sunsetting the DACA program, which was needed to fix an unconstitutional problem. But now, he says, it is up to Congress to fix the program. Such an open-ended circumvention of immigration laws was an unconstitutional exercise of authority by the executive branch. The effect of this unilateral executive amnesty among other things, contributed to a surge of minors at the southern border that yielded terrible humanitarian consequences. It also denied jobs to hundreds of thousands of Americans by allowing those same illegal aliens to take those jobs. We shouldn't have any hostage taking here. We shouldn't say we are going to do DACA in exchange for a wall. We are going to do DACA in exchange for something in the budget. We are going to do DACA in exchange for uh, more restrictive and tougher immigration uh, entrance requirements as part of immigration reform. Uh, it should be standalone. This is the issue we're dealing with. Revoking the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals Program, or DACA, uh, over the next two years could affect up to 800,000 immigrants. But Attorney General Jeff Sessions and other administration officials argued that it's actually less harmful to phase out the program than to allow it to be shut down entirely by the result of a lawsuit. In Washington, Trevor Fay, Cronkite News. Protesters took to the streets outside at Immigration and Customs Enforcement headquarters in Phoenix this morning. Cronkite News reporter Holly Bernstein spoke with DACA recipients and joins us now in the Media Center. Groups such as Mi Familia Vota and Trans Queer Pueblo attended the protest, which started at approximately 9.30 this morning. The group shared their thoughts on President Trump's decision to end DACA. Here to stay. Here to stay. This morning, Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals recipients protested in front of U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement headquarters following President Trump's decision to end the program. I first uh, came out of the shadows back in 2010 when I was an ASU student. Raina Mansoya is an Arizona State University alumna who has a younger brother who was also a DACA recipient. I was inspired to making sure that he didn't have to go through the same hurdles that I, that I went through, not knowing if you were going to get deported, not knowing if you were going to finish college. DACA recipient April Guerrero says now each of the groups at the protest will host a series of forums to inform their members. But I think now we are gathering to put our thoughts together, process what this announcement means and what it will mean for people with DACA. Montoya says DACA recipients will continue to educate people about who they are. And they will need to know that if they don't take a stand, if they don't call Congress, if they don't engage with their elected officials, people like me will be deported. According to the Department of Homeland Security, the United States Citizenship and Immigration Services will deny any uh, any request uh, to renew DACA filed after October 5, 2017. In the Media Center, Holly Bernstein, Cronkite News. A similar protest broke out in the nation's capital as DACA supporters marched from the White House to the offices of Immigration and Customs Enforcement. Cronkite News reporter Fraser Allen Best has the latest. Carlos Ariano joined hundreds of others outside the White House today at a rally in defense of DACA, the deferred deportation program that helped him after his family brought him from Mexico to Phoenix as a child. Ariano, who now lives in Washington, D.C., 
where he's in school to be a nurse, says there are many like him. I was very lucky to meet a, a national nurse and a, and a dreamer today, and he's, he's in the crowd. Yes, I can. Yes, I. Yes, we can, and, and uh, I will become a nurse. Roxy Herbeckian of the group Unite Here emphasized that many of the people DACA helps are vital to the economy in Arizona and beyond. These are folks that are working every day, c contributing, paying taxes, taking care of their families. Many of them have kids now who are college age, trying to go to college. These are the dreamers. The protesters marched from the White House toward the headquarters of Immigration and Customs Enforcement, or ICE, with a stop at the Trump International Hotel along the way. Many streets were closed as the march made its way across the city. I'm standing right now in front of the Immigration and Customs Enforcement headquarters. Right now you can see protesters entering behind me to to finish their statement here. With the crowd sitting outside the office shouting to be heard, Ariano still doesn't feel the Trump administration understands how he contributes. And uh, I had to study very hard. I'm a full-time student. And I'm just like you. I'm just like anyone else. And I work very hard. Ariano is scheduled to finish nursing school nine months from now. In Washington, Fraser Allen Best, Cronkite News. Arizona's U.S. representatives released statements on the DACA decision. Ruben Gallego said the program pre re represented the best of America and the worst of Donald Trump. And Kirsten Cinema tweeted it was time for Congress to pass the DREAM Act, while Paul Gosar said it was time to get rid of DACA. Arizona's two Republican senators seem to be on the same page with an eye on congressional action. Senator Jeff Flake tweeted that a DACA fix is doable, that the three bills he's working on could be considered today. John McCain released a statement on Twitter calling Trump's decision on DACA the wrong approach, but also encouraging bipartisan reform. Former Arizona Governor Jan Brewer and State Attorney General Mark Brnovich both expressed support for ending DACA today, saying they support lawful immigration as well as policy reform in Congress. And in Scottsdale, Tea Party President Dan Farley tells Cronkite News that the responsibility of immigration is back where it should be. When we want the country uh, following the foundation of the Constitution and following the rule of law. I, I believe my group would be very happy with the result today because the Congress and the Constitution is assigned uh, immigration. They're the ones that are supposed to make the laws on that. The debate is reaching classrooms even as students are walking out. Students at South Mountain High School and Central High School walked out in protest following the announcement. Phoenix Union High School District said on Facebook that it remains committed to serving all students, including Dreamers. And ASU President Michael Crow tweeted out a photo of the university's charter in response, which says in part that the school is measured by whom it includes, not who it excludes. In an email sent to students, staff, and faculty, Crow said ASU is committed to the success of its students. And the Arizona Board of Regents released a statement on supporting DACA students by calling for congressional action. It reads in part, Congress has a window of time to find a sensible and humane legislative solution to shield our DACA students from deportation and enable their future in our country. We encourage them to act swiftly and justly. Phoenix Mayor Greg Stanton also weighed in on the DACA decision, stating that dreamers make the country stronger. And many DACA recipients got together in Phoenix to support each other as the Trump administration's official decision was read. Cronkite News reporter Courtney Malley was there and brings us some of those emotional scenes. In consequences, it also denied jobs to hundreds of thousands of Americans. Emotions ran high Tuesday as dreamers, advocates and supporters gathered in downtown Phoenix to hear the news they knew was coming. The Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals policy, commonly known as DACA, has been rescinded by the Trump administration. One of them, Ricardo Zamudo, is a dreamer and says it's a bitter pill to swallow, but the DACA fight will continue. It's shocking and it's painful to hear these things, but when I look into the room and I look at my colleagues and everybody else that's, that's part of this work, uh, I see the, the power and the resiliency we've had for a long time. Peter Juarez, communications director for One Arizona, a pro-immigrant advocate organization, said dreamers have the strength to face what may come next. I think all the young people that have grown up in this movement are super prepared and know what to do. They're strong and yesterday is a sad day, but they are ready to move forward with this decision and the planning continues. With their future potentially now laying in the hands of Congress, nearly 30,000 Arizona DACA recipients now face an uncertain future. 
these things are, are, are not just a political game, it's our lives. And that we need to think of those things as that and, and not of a football game that, that we're playing all the time. In Phoenix, Courtney Malley, Cronkite News. Our Cronkite News teams are working across Arizona as well as Washington, D.C. and Los Angeles to track the impact of this DACA decision. You can find Cronkite News updates throughout the day on Facebook and Twitter. For our full multimedia coverage, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org. Recent studies show that some students are punished more than others in the classroom, and it's not necessarily based on behavior. Coming up on Cronkite News, we show you a program designed to protect minority and disabled students from overpunishment. Plus, a controversy in the East Valley over a form of wrestling, why some people call the event offensive. When a story comes in in the morning, we're out the door as fast as we can go. But it's also great to spend more time in communities and produce projects. From the borderlands to the cities, the reservations, and even the state capital, we want to get to the heart of the matter. When the lights come on in the studio, we know our hard work is about to pay off. We love what we do here at Cronkite News. We're proud to tell the stories of our state. Now more than ever, it's important to have a trusted news source, and that's Cronkite News. Tickets are now available for the annual Walter Cronkite Award for Excellence in Journalism Luncheon. Held Thursday, October 19th at the Sheraton Grand Phoenix. Join media industry and community leaders in honoring award-winning co-anchors and co-managing editors of the PBS NewsHour, Judy Woodruff, and the late Gwen Eiffel. To learn more or to purchase tickets, call 602-496-0482 or visit cronkite.asu.edu slash luncheon. This fall. I'm so excited! What? <laughs> from the inspiring to the amazing. We're in the presence of history. The compelling. He said, welcome home. It was just a powerful moment. To the astounding. <laughs> I promised myself I wouldn't cry. <laughs> and from the breathtaking. This is real. A journey to Mars. To the electrifying. We're going to change the world. All this and more. All this fall. The American Civil Liberties Union is joining forces with eight school districts in the Valley with their newest campaign to minimize disciplinary action toward minorities and disabled students. Cronkite News reporter Marcia Opong talked with one of the school districts involved. They like pay attention a lot more like to the students than the past teachers that I've been with. Carlos Diaz is a minority student who's now attending his 10th school. I'll go for high school. His mother, Eliza Diaz, is a parent with the ACLU's Demand to Learn campaign. She says Carlos has a learning disability and hasn't had a lot of luck with the schools he has attended. He's just really had a really tough time um, with accommodations and with the schools providing the services that he needs in order for him to be successful. If A equals 7. 11. Okay. The Demand to Learn campaign is about eliminating the practices that disproportionately impact kids of color, special ed, and ELL students to make sure that they are kept in the classroom, according to campaign manager Luisa Villa. For example, African American students are eight times more likely to be suspended out of school uh, in our charter high schools here in Phoenix. Uh, Latino students are six times more times to be uh, suspended in a high school here uh, in, in Phoenix. And the Native American students are uh, almost 10 times more likely to be suspended in suburban schools close to tribal communities. Did you see that? No. No. Yes. Martin Perez Jr., the vice principal of Academia del Pueblo Elementary School, urges everyone in the community to get involved in this campaign to help ensure that students get the future they deserve. Growing up, specifically in middle school, I was suspended several times um, uh, for you know various reasons. Had it not been for my teachers, my school principal, and the support staff at my school, I probably would not be here today. My son is not a failure and he is going to be a success. We can't let discriminatory practices dictate who our child is going to be or what opportunities our child is going to have. In downtown Phoenix, Marcio Paul, Cronkite News. The Rocking Taco Street Festival, hosted by the city of Chandler, takes place later in September. Advertising for margaritas, $2 tacos, and extreme wrestling. 
But there is something else about the festival that's upsetting some people. Cronkite News reporter Monica Sampson joins us from the Broadcast Center to break down the controversy. The main attraction for the Taco Festival is extreme wrestling, but not any kind of wrestling. See, the controversy stems from the name itself, hosted by the national organization Extreme Midget Wrestling. Because we find that the M word is a very derogatory word towards people with disabilities. This is what the chapter president of Little People of America objects to, is what's being advertised. But it's the comments that bother Little People of America district director and advocate mother, Gail Blackburn. Sorry, I get choked up, but I mean, there's... That word midget spurns such hatred, just like the N-word does to a certain group. And on the Phoenix New Times Facebook post, people saying, forget the tacos, forget the beer, we just want to see extreme midgets. Cronkite News reached out to the city of Chandler. We received this written statement saying, the city of Chandler is not the sponsor, organizer, or promoter of the event even though it is being held in a public venue. So Cronkite News reached out to the Downtown Chandler Community Partnership, the event organizer, who also didn't want to go on camera, but sent us a written statement saying, we have taken measure to remove any reference to the M word in our marketing efforts and our event website. Cronkite News spoke with Tyler Ward, managing partner for Extreme Midget Wrestling, over the phone about the controversy. No, the Washington Redskins didn't change their name, and they're not going to. We're not going to change our name. Oh, you know what? I'm really offended that they what they're doing to white people, the Dallas Cowboys. So everyone's a cowboy and a redneck. Let's call the Dallas Cowboys up to get them to change their name. Mother Gail Blackburn shared why for her this event is more than just a word. It just doesn't need to be. And the city of Chandler had an amazing opportunity to make this right, and they haven't. Because now they're saying, oh, we'll pull the word now. But there's so much hatred out there that even when they're pulling the word, it's still out there. The little people of America so far have said they would like just a public apology. In the Broadcast Center, Monica Sampson, Cronkite News. Cleanup efforts still continue in Texas. But Florida residents are gearing up to face Hurricane Irma, the latest on the second hurricane that will soon hit the southeast. And back here at home, our monsoon is making a return. Your, your full seven-day forecast coming up. Hello from the children of planet Earth. Exploring, it's the lifeblood of the mission. Human beings are a curious bunch. What are we gonna see when we get really close? Just because an idea is crazy, it's not necessarily wrong. We were on our way. You don't get anywhere until you've tested the limits. That carries an intensity you can't imagine. You could hear people just, whoa. Oh my God, absolutely spectacular. It's a rush. We ask a lot of our heroes. We are at a remarkable moment. <laughs> We're going farther than any exploration ever has. Officially from 36. And he hooks it in. Arizona State wins. Keeping one deep. And it is caught. Hurricane Irma is now reported as a Category 5 storm, the first in the Atlantic for more than a decade. The storm is expected to hit Florida sometime this weekend. Florida Governor Rick Scott announced a state of emergency across the state and ordered 7,000 National Guard troops to report to the state by Friday. Florida residents are rushing to prepare for the storm's arrival by flocking to local grocery stores to stock up on food and water. Others spent the day waiting in long lines to fill up on gas and gas stations across the state. Governor said that while expect, exact, yeah, exact path of the hurricane is still uncertain, weather can change in an instant, and while we hope for the best, we must prepare for the worst. 
Meanwhile, Texans are still dealing with the aftermath of Hurricane Harvey. Many areas of the state are still flooded, and those who are able to return home have expressed fears about looting. Houston's mayor toured Kingwood today, where many residents brought up their fears of looters. He warned residents to just be very, very careful when returning home. While looting is a real concern for citizens, a Houston City Council member who joined the mayor on his tour urged citizens to not confuse people digging through garbage with looters. Texas Governor Greg Abbott said that he expects the flooding from Harvey to subside later this week. Now let's go to Emily Bloom in the Broadcast Weather Center with a look at this week's forecast. Yes, as Texas continues to peak, pick up the pieces of Hurricane Harvey, all eyes now on Hurricane Irma, headed for the East Coast as we speak. Now, with winds up to 180 miles per hour, this is one of the largest Atlantic hurricanes currently on record, and of course, a Category 5 hurricane. Taking a look at our satellite and radar, the Leeward Islands are going to begin to see these tropical storm force winds tonight. Bouncing ahead 24 hours, we begin to see the eye of that storm moving in. Now, as of right now, this is the path that hurricane forecasters Forecasters are predicting that Irma is going to move. Miami seeing the worst of it Sunday at 2 p.m. Now, of course, a lot could change between now and then, so we are going to continue to track this very closely for you. Back here at home, our high today of 106 degrees, just three degrees above our average of 103. Across the state at the moment, we have got 74 at the Grand Canyon, 109 in Lake Havasu, 104 down in Tucson, 79 in Sholo. As we head into the rest of the week, our temperatures are going to stay a bit above average by Friday. We've got some moisture moving into the state that is going to bring those temperatures down as well as a return for that monsoon weather. Take a look at that. Saturday, our high 96 degrees. For Cronkite Weather, I'm Emily Bloom. A Scottsdale author was a big draw at the National Book Festival this past weekend. And even if you don't know her name, you may know the popular book she inspired. Coming up on Cronkite News, we'll take you to meet the Arizonan behind the Outlander series. <laughs> what are you doing? Possibilities. For you? Your day is filled with them. Reach up, energy in the fingertips, collapse. TV played out in that. And PBS helps everyone discover theirs. Anytime, anywhere sky you can see it pbs we're with you for life third rail with ozzy the new weekly show where we tackle the taboo and debate the tough questions with some of the most interesting minds in the game i'm carlos watson electrifying conversation friday only on pbs Fridays, it's at Cronkite News, your social sharing connection where you choose the news. Facebook likes and shares, tweets, retweets, and favorites. YouTube views and subscriptions. We're watching you watch us. From our digital home at cronkitenews.azpbs.org to your television, web browser, or mobile device. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Then join us for at Cronkite News, our weekly refresh, each Friday at 5 on Arizona PBS. It's a long way from Flagstaff to Scotland, but one Arizona author has been taking her readers there for some time now. And she took a side trip to Washington where she talked about her work at the National Book Fair. Cronkite News reporter Bailey Vogt has the story from our Washington Bureau. 20 years ago, I shut the door on the past. This may not look like a scene from Northern Arizona, but Flagstaff native Diana Gabaldon said she was inspired by her time living in the Ponderosa Pines of her hometown when she began writing the Outlander series of books. I did do a lot of work in forests, so, uh, you know, the sensory details of what it's like to be in a forest, you know, the animals and the birds that you would see and hear and so forth. These are, of course, different in Scotland, but they occupy the same ecological niches. Gabaldon's book spawned the Outlander TV series, whose third season premieres Sunday on the Stars Network. The success of the series landed Gabaldon an invitation to the National Book Festival in Washington, D.C. over the Labor Day weekend. Authors showcase their books, participate in panels, and meet fans of their work. 
Well, it's uh, very, very, uh, very flattering. I've done the book festival twice before, back when they were still having it on the mall. And uh, yeah, I've always had a very good time here. Hundreds of fans waited in line as long as an hour to get a quick autograph and interaction with Gabaldon at the festival, which she says is terrific. You know, it's this you know, small but warm moment of connection and so forth. And, you know, you write books to be read, so it, it feels good to know that people enjoy them. <laughs> Even though the Outlander TV and book series are running strong, Gabaldon realizes not everyone may be familiar with it. She has a wager for those potential fans. Pick it up, open it anywhere, read three pages. If you can put it down again, I'll pay you a dollar. <laughs> so I've never lost any money on that bet. <laughs> In Washington, D.C., Bailey Vote, Cronkite News. And if you lose that wager and get interested in the books, Gabaldon is currently working on the ninth book in the Outlander series. Cronkite News is proud to be the news division of Arizona PBS. Here's what's coming up on Arizona Horizon and PBS NewsHour. On the next Arizona Horizon, a look at the Black Theater Troupe and how its current performance reflects the current political climate. And we'll visit a summer camp where science and technology careers are encouraged. That's the next Arizona Horizon. I'm John Yang on the next news hour. The practical, political, and personal implications of President Trump's plan for undocumented immigrants who came to the United States as children. That's Tuesday on the PBS News Hour. That's it for Cronkite News tonight. Thanks for joining us. For top stories anytime, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org.